All right. I have been sort of indirectly been asked to cover more introductory type of material. Okay. Uh, I hesitate saying the word elementary. I think it's annoying. Just a quick word about that. One thing that's annoying about math, nothing really is ever con con considered advanced. You have elementary algebra, intermediate algebra. You'd think maybe advanced algebra would come. No, we call it college algebra. Okay. All right, and then it's trigonometry, and then it's sort of like beginning calculus, and then it's like, you know, like pre calculus, and then it's like, and later on, you do actually, you, sometimes you call it advanced calculus, but it's usually called real analysis, because they want to avoid something saying advanced. What am I getting at here? Um, <laughs> a lot of these math people think everything is easy. And it, there's a reason why. And I don't want to get onto this too much, but basically, if you notice, if you've studied math at all, you notice that concepts in math for the most part, from my experience, are pretty much either incomprehensible, and the thought is that you'll never understand it, or once you finally do, you say, damn me, this is obvious now. It's either abstract nonsense or plain as day. And I was an idiot before for not understanding it. It's like everything is trivial once you figure it out. It's a strange sort of paradox, if you ask me, but that's the side. I want to prove this, okay? Um, one of the reasons why I want to prove this specifically is because, and I used to teach, okay, people people think um, that concepts or formulas in math, they just appear out of nowhere, out of thin air, and we're just supposed to use them and just believe that they work. They just, these, these properties of exponents, they just work, right? You don't question why. There's no reason why, actually. People think there's no reason why. You just do it, and it, because it, you know that's what they tell you to do. I hate to say it, but I mean, I'm sorry for being mean, but damn you. This is absolutely not what's going on. This stuff works. <laughs> there's a reason why. Okay, follow what I'm doing here. Follow what I'm doing. This is a quadratic equation. This is an equation. It has equals. That's by definition an equation, right? What's the point of this quadratic formula? I want to prove the quadratic formula because, okay, so you know it doesn't come out of nowhere, okay? The solutions of this are these. There's two of them. Oh, degree two, two solutions. Now, you got to be careful because they may not be real. Uh, maybe I can get into that later. I don't know. It has to do with this, right? Discriminant. Can't take the square root of a negative. I can go on and on about this forever. I'm not going to. Let's prove it. I'm absolutely going to run out of room because this does require a significant amount of algebra. All right. Just start with the equation. All right. Proof. All right. So AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. I'm going to do everyone's pretty much least favorite thing to do in algebra, and that is completing the square. How do you complete the square? Well, you make sure the leading coefficient is one. How do I do that? Factor out A. All right, why don't I first bring C over though? All right? So this tells me that A times X squared plus B over A X plus something is equal to negative C. All right. You should be saying, okay, yeah, I know exactly what happened, right? I mean, if I didn't do anything crazy, distribute the A. A times this is AX squared. A times B over A is B, X. Leave a blank, I'm going to complete the square. Bring the C over. No big deal, I'm just doing algebra, right? Now, now, how do I find this term? How do we find this term? If you complete the square, if you're in algebra, you need to be able to complete the square, right? I take half the middle and I square it. I take half the middle and I square it. Half of B over A. Half of B over A. Be careful here with the algebra, half of b over a, maybe I should just do it over here to convince you, half of b over a, do we even know how to divide fractions? You can't divide at will however you like, it's not commutative. How do you divide fractions? We take the numerator, you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. This is 2 over 1, this is equal to b over a times 1 over 2. How do you multiply fractions? Across. b over 2a. Boy oh boy. Not too bad, right? Just algebra. 
to a squared. Take half the middle, b over 2a, square it. Why the hell would you do this? Why is it called completing the square? Do they just have random names for these things for no reason at all? No, they absolutely have a reason. I mean, this is a perfect square trinomial now. Every time they complete the square, it's always a perfect square trinomial. Every single time. If it's not, you messed up. So this is now a times x plus b over 2a squared. Now, how do I know this? Well, for one, I taught a lot of algebra. For two, it works. For three, it will always be what you got when you did b over 2. Whenever you took the middle term and divided by 2, it always factors this way. And this is what it means to be a perfect square trinomial. It's a binomial squared. Foil it out and get this. All right. Equals. So I have negative c over here. Can I just leave that there and, you know, I'm done, right? And actually, I should have done it up here. I can just randomly throw this in here, right? What did I really add over here? What did I really add? So let's be careful with this, right? Because, um, what is this term? This is b squared. This is b squared divided by 4a squared. So should I just add the same thing? No, because that's not exactly what I added to the left-hand side. We do have to add something so you can balance the equation, right? You can't just randomly throw things to the left-hand side and claim it's the same as before. What did I really add here? I added a times that. All right, so plus b squared over 4a to the 1 power. That's right. All right. All right. So I have that. So I have this guy plus b squared over 4a. Wonderful. Wonderful. Why would I do this? I want to get x by itself. It's your favorite thing to do. Find x. All we care about is finding x, right? Let's divide by a. So now this tells me that x plus b over 2a squared is equal to negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. If I want to get x by itself, you take the square root. And if you are, well, if you want to be good at algebra, you need to always remember something we take the square root. And I used to be really furious. I used to cry myself to sleep people didn't do this. How sad. Cry myself to sleep. What's wrong with me? Plus or minus. Not really. Uh, whatever. Take the square root plus or minus, right? Plus or minus the square root of this business. So negative C uh, divided by A plus B squared divided by 4A squared, right? And I know you're looking at this and you're saying, what in the hell? Is this going to work? Is this going to work? I'm absolutely running out of room, right? Let me grab one more step. Let's bring the minus b uh, over to it, right? This tells me that x is equal to negative b divided by 2a uh, plus or minus the square root. I'm going to switch the terms here. Addition is commutative, perfectly legal. b squared over 4a squared minus c over a. Ah, this looks horrible. This looks horrible. Is this going to work? I claim we're done, actually. Let's just... See how good we are at algebra and clean this up. We're pretty much there. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's uh, give myself some more room. Let's come back up here. Let's see what we can do. Hopefully you're following along. Okay, so I need to come back to this piece. Back to this piece here. Get rid of all this. Because now you know. Let's do some algebra then. What does this equal? Well, I want to combine these. How do I combine those? I find an LCD. So we have that x is equal to, let's just leave this as is, negative b over 2a plus or minus. What's the LCD here? Well, it's two denominators, 4a squared and a. I need the least common denominator. I need a 4 here and I need another a. There we go. So this is the square root of b squared uh, over 4a squared minus, write the second term with that denominator, uh, 4ac over 4a squared. Just take a second and say, did I do this right? 
how do you know you did things right in algebra? You just check. I mean, you just cancel things. Look, right, the fours cancel. Now one of the A's cancel. Oh, I get this. Now I know I did it right. Now I'm convinced. Oh, thank God. They have the same denominator. All right, so x equals negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 4a squared. Do you see it yet? We're there. We're done. Let's continue though. Let's convince ourselves. Always convince yourself. This is a quotient. The square root of the quotient is equal to the quotient of the square roots. The square root of the quotient is the quotient of the square roots. Why would I care about this? I can get the square root of 4a squared. What's the square root of 4a squared? That's right. It's 2a. So negative b divided by 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. How convenient. These have the same denominator. I don't want to add fractions of the same denominator, just add or, add or subtract the numerator. We're done. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I emphasize the all over part. They're not just trying to put this over 2a or this over 2a. The whole thing, this division bar goes all the way across. Done. So, someone didn't just take the quadratic formula and pull it out of their, you know, and be like, here, use this. Let's just arbitrarily do things in math for no reason. <sighs> Everything has a reason, damn it. Everything has a reason. I wanna do, since I'm on this topic, let's just do one other thing. Let's just, I mean, there's so many things I could say about this. Would you please draw a damn picture? Just draw a damn parabola. That's what the graph is, right? Here's the parabola. Here's the parabola. It's either up or down. I don't really care. But let's say that there's the vertex. It's not necessarily on the, on the y-axis, right? We just found these. We just found those. These, if I do the plus one, it's this one. That's the intercept. Remember, I let y be zero, right? Because this is exactly y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Let y be zero. We find the x-intercepts, because y is zero. Find the x-intercepts. What is x? These two things, the positive one, the negative one. So we're done with that. How do I find this, the vertex? That's what I want to get at. Once I have these, it's easy. With regards to the parabola, the shape of this, Turns out the vertex is exactly between the intercepts, regardless of what the parabola looks like. It's always between. It's always in the middle. If only I knew how to take two points and average them. How do I take two things and average them? Oh, you add them up and divide by two. Huh. I thought that this vertex formula, they were just, you know, pulling things out of their butt again. Right? I mean, absolutely not. Let's derive the vertex formula. How do you find the vertex? How do I find V, the vertex there? E, V, P, Z. Take your x-intercepts, add them up, divide by two. To find the vertex, average the x-intercepts. We have the x-intercepts. We just found them using the quadratic formula. All right, well, one of them was the positive one, so negative b plus the square root of b squared uh, minus 4ac all over 2a. Add it to the other one, negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I'm taking my two points, I'm averaging them. Here's one, here's two. Average them, I divide by two. What happens when I do this? my x value of the vertex. They both have the same denominator. Add them up. The, the radicand or the radical portion cancels. This is exactly negative 2b in combining like terms over 2a divided by 2. This is exactly 
negative b over a divided by 2. How do you divide fractions? Take the numerator and multiply by the reciprocal denominator. So this is exactly negative b over 2a. That's the vertex. That's the vertex. It is x equals negative b over 2a. How do I find the y value? Oh, I plug it in the function. f of negative b over 2a. Done. If you're in calculus, and I encourage you to take calculus because that's when math starts getting interesting, just take the derivative of this. So calculus people, listen, what do you know about this point? Slope is zero at the vertex. Oh, take the derivative, set it equals zero. X equals negative b over 2a. Easy peasy. Tell me what you think. I apologize if I get a little bit passionate, angry. I just want you to learn this. Comment on the video.